Well, thanks, um, Mazi. Until most recently, like you observed, Southeast region was the most secure and safe. But events in the past few weeks have changed the scenario, changed the narrative, changed the security color. And um, I think uh, now we have uh, some kind of red security uh, flag that is uh, up. And I guess it is in response to that, that uh, the Southeast Governors Forum, along with uh, Ohaneze Ndibo, President General, held a quick meeting and uh, came up with uh, a bubago. So that's a response to the current security scenario. I think um, that it has been uh, formed. I, my thinking was that the support it will enjoy it will cut across the entire Igbo land within the Southeast, outside the Southeast in Nigeria and the diaspora. But that is not what you are seeing now. So what it goes to tell me is that actually those people who were clamoring for this outfit, a number of them were just calling for it for the purpose of propaganda. A number of them have just been calling for this outfit uh, just to belittle the stature of uh, the Igbo political leaders that they are not able to secure their people. Now that the governors with Ohaneze have come up with this outfit, I think it's preposterous for anybody, any true Igbo man to rise up against this particular uh, outfit. But unfortunately, many educated Igbos are now poo-pooing the idea, but they can come up with any credible reason why they have one thing or the other against a bubago. I think the best thing that has happened to us, speaking security, is the formation of this Ibubago. And I think that if we are a reasonable people, as we are looked upon from other parts of this country, what everybody should do is to give full support to this outfit so that it will gain the legitimacy. Legitimacy is first of all given by the law, but there is legitimacy given by the population. So we expect that the Igbos will give it the legitimacy it deserves so that it will gain the strength and the confidence knowing that my people are behind us. They are ready. The Ebubag will be ready to put in everything possible within the ambits of the resources it has at its disposal to forge a common front with the Igbo population in order to achieve the desired security for the Southeast. And achieving the desired security for the Southeast requires two things. We must look at the security of Igbo man from two perspectives. One, the security of the Igbo man who is in the Southeast. And the security of the Igbo man who is outside Southeast, but within this nation, Nigeria. And you know that we have more population of Igbos outside Igbo land within this nation. So if Ebubago is allowed to go the way some people some radical minds, 
some unarticulated minds. If Ebubagu should go in that way, we will create crisis that will consume the Igbos that are outside of Igbo land. So Ebubago must operate circumspectly. Ebubago must operate with deep sense of reasoning, with the, uh, with the Igbos, the lives of the Igbos outside Igbo land in the forefront of everything that we do. I pop at East ESN. I must address them squarely. I pop and ECN, ESN, have an agenda of creating crisis that will consume the Igbos. They are not doing anything that will help Igbos. What they are doing is to cause, you know, people who love their people, they can be doing videos shouting, uh, chase them, uh, kill them. Everywhere you see Fulani, kill him. Everywhere you see their cow, kill them. Without knowing that you have your own people that are also in their own land. So all those video clips are very dangerous for the existence of our people. And they, are, they, they were done without the, 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 any thought for the safety of our people outside the Boland. IPOP and ESN wants to create a crisis, a level of crisis in Nigeria that will bring hatred upon the Igbos that are outside Igbo land. And then what happened in 1966, 67, will repeat itself. Where the road, there will be roadblocks in all the uh, route, routes going to Igbo land and they will butcher our people. The ones they don't slaughter in the city, they will slaughter on the way. Uh, but let me come back, you know, you now mentioned the IPOP in your answer to my question. The question, you know, the, the question that will naturally come and everybody will want to know is, I remember because I was involved and I extensively covered the, when Enugu International, Akanebia International Airport was closed in July, 2019. I remember vividly that the uh, Southeast governors met and in that meeting, they issued a statement and in that statement therein contained that uh, they were going to have a, you know, a form of a security network to um, provide security for the Southeast region. Now that is July 2020, 2019. Many people- August, have, August, August. Sorry, August, 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 yes, sorry, August. Yeah, thank you very much for that correction. So since that August, many people now, when I read online, when I have conversation, people say, wow, the reason why it, they appear not to trust or not to move with this is because since that time they've been waiting, the Eurobus came and they've done theirs, and here are we, you know, a year, more than one year later, and we are now having this announcement, hence people receiving it with mixed feelings. So don't you think that the delay also led to these mixed feelings that we see today, General? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, what is happening about security of the Southeast is more political than real. IPOB has been using security to play politics unnecessarily in Igbo land. Let me tell you something. When the South, the Southeast was the first to come up with this regional security outfit, like we said, on the 31st of August, 2019. And I am not holding brief for the governors, but I want to say that in security calculations, 
you don't do force surge when there is no threat. And you don't build up troops when there are no indicators of insecurity. The insecurity that has been in the Southeast until recently are the same level of insecurity that has been there 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Issues, in fact, it even came down. The insecurity associated with kidnapping, armed robbery, those regular issues that have been the part of our security problem in Nigeria. Now, the good response from the governors is that they, there was a change in the security classification and they responded immediately by forming a bubago. So remember that the resources of the Southeast states are very little compared to resources that go to other parts of this country. So, and they're sponsoring a force, a body of troops would have eaten so deep into their resources when there was no palpable insecurity problem that warranted it. This, all those, those calls for the security outfit were more political, propaganda of fears. That's well what called for them. So I think that the governors did, left for me, the Bubago would have come earlier. But based on calculation, economic calculation, I think the way they have responded at this point in time, where the security situation has taken a downturn, I think it's appropriate. And there is nothing to stop our people from giving a Bubago a full support. Any person speaking against this outfit must be a palpable enemy of the Southeast or someone who has an agenda different from the agenda of Igbos as a people that want a situation that offers them security to carry out their businesses. That's okay. what I think. So in, in, in that case, what you're, what you're saying is, if I, if I just oppose your answer to a media report in, 20, in February, to be precise, February 2020, where the Southeast governors were quoted as saying that the Southeast does not need to form a regional emphasis here a regional security outfit. Then the question to you, knowing that you are the one that heads this, uh, that headed the uh, security committee, then I will now say to you, General, if the are now saying, there was a time the governor said, we cannot have a regional security outfit. Now we have formed this. I will say, what has changed? Security situation, the color, has changed. Mm. And uh, let me also tell you, in the communique of the governors, they were specific on the fact that the vigilante groups that will be formed as the Ebube Ago force will be state-based but coordinated, there will be a coordinating command and control center at Enugu. And this is important because there are some security facilities that will be uncommercial for each state to go for its own. Jointly, they could go for some of such facilities 
it will save them a lot of money. And then at the center, they will facilitate information sharing. They will facilitate training. They will facilitate psyops. They will facilitate uh, information operations. So all those are areas that could be facilitated at the center. It will not be regional in the sense, regional, what an unquote, because there is constitutionally, there is no region, no region in that's Nigeria. Correct. That's correct. So each state is going to come up with a law by the state assembly, establishing the outfit. They will share the same uniform, they will share the same uh, color and the vehicles. Everything will be the same. They will have the same training, but they will operate. The governors will be in charge at their various states. But they have some basic security information and pieces of advice that the center, the coordinating center could pass on to the various states. And then liaison will easily be facilitated when there is a command center. Besides that, this security awareness that the whole South is required, uh, requires would be best done at the coordinating center. So these are the things that will be done at the coordinating center, notwithstanding, without prejudice to all I've said. It does not mean that if there is, if Maruda's terrorists are invading a part of Enugu state, that the vigilante in Ebonya cannot cross over to support Enugu state. Nothing says that. Okay, so- Even constitutionally, nothing says that. If the Southeast can cooperate economically. If the Southwest can cooperate economically, there is no way in the constitution that says insecurity issues that regions, uh, states within a region cannot cooperate. Okay, that's, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a fair point there. So what you're saying in essence is, because reading the communique, part of it as regards to the command and control, which we uh, made to understand is gonna be sitting in Enugu. So what you're saying in essence is, Let's say we have, you know, bandits or headsmen invading their, let's say, Uzo one. What you're saying is the command and control in Enugu can say, well, okay, we need more men from maybe a closer Abia, Ebonyi, and maybe from Anambra State. Is that correct? All right. Okay. That is a they very are, They are our brothers everywhere they are. Okay. That's, that's good to know, and uh, I believe that will gladden the hearts of many people uh, watching this program this evening. And uh, um, General here, i come back to you. And um, obviously, we've, we've listened to the command structure that you've told us. Do you have an idea how many men we might be looking at in terms of this uh, security network? Well, um, to determine the, the force you require, there should be um, threat security analysis. And you juxtapose that with the resources available to the various state governors. Because Putting a force together is one thing, maintaining the force is another. And unmaintained force could turn to be an insecurity in itself. Exactly. So uh, one, there will be security analysis to know what exactly are the, the force we want, what exactly are, going, are they going to be engaged in? what level of instruments of violence will be available to them because weapon is force multiplier. 
if they have to go with um, button and walking stick and matchet, then you require 1,000 men to protect one community. And no government can pay for such force. So the issue is how to balance all of this. What level of support is the federal government going to give to this regional outfit? Because take a look at Amoteku. The federal government refused to approve a scale of equipment that could help them achieve the mission and vision of Amoteku. So though Amoteku is in place, but we do not even really understand what they are going through. But let's leave that for another day. Though Amoteku is in place, but they are not as effective as they ought to be because the federal government has not allowed them a level of equipment they require. Until that is allowed, then what you can run away with is that there is no vigilante force any way in this nation that can truly stand to combat terrorists that are well armed. That is the fact of the matter. That is the truth on the ground. Well, and I that mean, is... Sir General here, uh, I don't think, you know, anybody in his right sense will be expecting the vigilantes able to, you know, being able to uh, combat, uh, you know, bandits in, in helixes with uh, RPGs or anything. But I mean, we, we do have uh, this um, cynical side of uh, having a bunch of, you know, they come in form of headsmen. And uh, it, I mean, recently we had it in, 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 in Ebony uh, where they can, you know, I think that was a good idea and come in and uh, cause such havoc. And if we had such, you know, defense mechanism, um, I believe for such, you know, it's something of, of that nature that uh, the uh, vigilante or rather the security outfit could actually handle and probably uh, push, them back, uh, push them back, isn't it? Well, uh, Maz, if you had really had the full story, you would have understood that those people came in in those wee hours of the night with a lot of staccato sounds of gunfire. They didn't just come with matchets and walking sticks. They came with automatic weapons and the fire rented the air that many villagers got up and started running for their dear lives. But it was in the night. They didn't even know the direction to run to, except that they felt they were running away from the sound of the automatic weapons. But the way the, these uh, uh, terrorists or bandits operate is that they could be firing from the left and some of them will lay ambush at the fire. All right. So if you are running to what are people are doing? Every social media you see that Igbos are mainly in, all they do is how to criticize their leaders. They say nothing to the central government. They
Okay, I think um, uh, sadly here, General. They say you... nothing to the enemies of Ndibo. Therefore, when you, Ibubago, can succeed and make credible suggestions, they will rather be criticizing whatsoever that is done in the course of putting this Ibubago to full operations. Well, uh, uh, General, part of the conversation here is to unpick the gray areas that probably people didn't understand from the statement, the six minutes, I think six minutes, 20 seconds. Oh, um, I think the connection, are you still there, General? Yes, I'm there. Oh, okay. Um, the, the, the six minutes, 20 seconds statement that was read. Now the question, obviously, from what you have said now, part of what we're doing is to understand and to unpick these gray areas. Now, one of the things you said is that, uh, I put it in my own way, that Amotekun is in place, but important. Obviously, by not having the uh, requisite you know, tools to work, you know, one could actually say they are important and probably exist in, uh, for plausible effect. Question then to you, General, will be, what are the lessons we can learn from Amotekun in order for us not to fall within whatever happened? Uh, you know, <clears throat> security is uh, a very complicated issue. And there are, uh, there are some things I wouldn't want to share uh, on this platform okay. uh, in the marketplace. So, but I, I want to say that um, Every problem calls for deliberate effort towards finding out plausible solutions. I guess that there could be ways around these um, expected problems and uh, it could be addressed in the best possible way that would be legal and very transparent. Okay, thank you very much, General. In Igbo, we say, at all of my all of all of the face of I believe um, that question is well understood, is, or rather, the answer is well understood. Um, it is something left to be done, uh, Nimobi. And I mean, I take it at that. And um, having said that, people had issues when they saw the pictures that came from Mowere where that was declared. And I have had the privilege of many people asking me, why do we have in that meeting, I mean, I could gazette an answer, but I would want that answer to come from you, that people consider that uh, in a meeting that was meant to be for the people of Southeast of Ondibo, and they had top security men and women who are not in the Igbo, in their midst discussing Igbo security? Um, no, 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 that's not the, the, the real scenario. Uh, there were, um, the meetings were in two phases. The first phase was with those who came from the presidency, our governors, and then the President General of Ohanese. That's phase one. Phase two was only our governors and then the President General of Ohanese, not with the security agencies, not with the representatives of the president, no, two phases. Okay, it's good, it's good that that clarification is made because I believe uh, many people who are genuinely uh, concerned about that, I mean, uh, obviously you've uh, had that question. Now, um, in that meeting, we also had, I uh, think uh, point 14 in that communique said, meeting agreed that open grazing has been banned and security agencies should implement the ban. Where are we? with the banning of this, or rather open grazing. Open grazing has been banned. We have heard this enough. 
it's you know is there a state legislature you know uh, legislation as of, as of as it were as of today by any state assembly that has banned open grazing in the southeast well again i tell you i am not a governor you call me major general you never call me his excellency <laughs> so I want to say as much as I know, there are at least two states in the Southeast that sent a bill each to their state assemblies. And there was a law that they produced banning open grazing. That is the much I can tell you, but I don't want to start mentioning the states to the exclusion of others. Okay, um, General, thank you very much for that answer. We would uh, take about three questions from the audience, but before I do, now, you know, Ndibo all over the world is watching. What is it that um, you will be looking to extract from Ndibo as regards this Ebubagu security initiative? Number one, when it comes to security, any people that are interested in survival and the future of their children they shun politics, they shun every other thing and come together to deal with the issue of security with deep sense of responsibility. I expect Ibos to do that. Number two, the Southeast governors cannot sponsor security based on their mega resources. Ibos must come together to contribute to security funds. We require that as early as yesterday. Thirdly, people must be positive in their criticisms. Criticism is good, it helps any organization, but the best is constructive and positive criticisms, not sarcasm, not just persuaded by, you know, those who expect that you should speak in a particular way, that is play to the gallery. Our people should stop playing to the gallery. Our people should quit being sponsored by unscrupulous politicians to attack their own system. Except we do this and come together as a people, we cannot survive this trial that is in the air. So that is my advice to Ibus for once. Let's come together as a people. Thank you very much, General. Um, to your last word, where you say that uh, speaking in certain terms, obviously I have read also, and uh, people also reached me. Uh, many said that the press release uh, was done, and it, uh, in some words, that it was watered down. It is apologetic to the center but again, I think uh, as Ndibo, we, if we go back and read that same press release, but this time around, bearing in mind the position Ndibo occupy in Nigeria, it may make more sense. Now, um, the, the vigilante, as they are currently formed in all the five Southeast states, will 
be absorbed into the Ibube Ago. I guess that uh, settles that issue. Then, you see, let me tell um, um, Bernesenton. Mazi Bernesenton. Uh, my brother, I think the issue is that some of you are acting based on the sexed up information, propaganda of fear that you have been hearing. You people do not really know what is on the ground. It is actually very, like someone who came from the uh, US to Nigeria, he spent three weeks. And uh, by the time he was going, he was asking, ah, all these things we have been hearing in US, I never knew that I could just move, I, that I could move to any part of this country without being waylaid, without being killed. So you people have been put into some kind of mental siege that you don't believe that anything good is happening in this nation. Your people have been so, your, 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 your psyche have been so mesmerized that you see nothing good about Nigeria, nothing good about the political leaders in Nigeria. What you see that is good is only your opinion and what you think that is on ground. I can't understand why someone who is there outside this country we say that the best option for Ndibo is ESF. What is your proof? What is your understanding? So I just don't, I, 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 I think it's something that is based on unnecessary bias and prejudice, primordial prejudice for that matter. Now you are asking, you say that you are disappointed in the general that you don't, that you should do, that what I said about first surge, anywhere in the world, ask Chidi, before the, a first surge is in response to palpable threats, you don't surge a force and keep them without knowing the apparent threats that they're supposed to contain. So, if you don't understand some military terminologies, please don't address such issues. And then I want to tell you that it, the Southeast governors have been doing what you people, most, most of you in diaspora don't want to know about because you have made up minds. Some of you have been indoctrinated to believe that Oh, when crisis is caused in Nigeria and Biafra is formed, you will come and become provincial governors. You will come and hold this appointment or that or the other. And then you now have a foothold that you hitherto do not have upon this nation. I think it's a wrong way to think. Any person who wants power, there is a process. Return home, come and contest for any office. You are free, you are at liberty. But to stay out there, not knowing exactly what is happening there, and then you are prescribing that ESN should continue to operate in Nigeria and draw war upon us. You don't even know what the implication of what they are doing. They are great. You are talking about calling a, 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 a force to come and bomb your own people. Listen. The danger, the, the gravest danger that is facing Igbos is IPOB and ESN. They are the ones that are responsible for the killing of many youths because they are drawing war upon Nigeria, upon Igbo land. And as many as are sponsoring IPOB and encouraging IPOB to do this, when the drum beat begins, I hope you will return to Nigeria. And some of you don't have your children in Nigeria. The youths that they are using, they are camped in the bush. They are not cared for. They will soon turn to gorillas. They are already doing that. They go to homes, bring up people, extort them, kidnap some, 
They are already doing it. And that is what you are saying. An illegal body, you that is in a developed country, you are encouraging obviously illegal contraption. You are saying it is good for Igbo land. May the almighty God help us because we must always call on God. Ah, la, 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 la.